Okay, well, welcome attendees. Um, my name is Carolyn Chen. And um, of course, I'm gonna be talking about getting to and around New York City. Uh, so some of the guest speakers we have, I've recruited my cousin, Allison, uh, to join us because she has been a lifelong resident of New York City. I no longer live there. So I figure if anybody has questions that they really need a native to answer, Allison is available. And Diana Hotelling is um, monitoring our Q&A chat box. So because this is a webinar, if you have specific questions that you need us to answer, type it in the Q&A box. Um, I'll be pausing to check if there are questions and um, stay on topic. This is specifically how to get in and around New York. So I'm not talking much about classes or the conference. It's how to get you in, how to get you there safely. Okay, so let me go and share my screen for my presentation. All right, so welcome everybody. The topic is getting to and getting around New York City. So here's my outline. I'm gonna talk about the possible airports you can fly into, there's three of them. Traveling by train, traveling by bus. Hopefully we'll have time to talk about things to do in New York City. I'll talk about the Metro card or how you get around internally. I've got some pictures of the Hilton Midtown and my comments about parking if you drive. All right, for public transportation planning, um, there are a lot of information on the websites. Oh, I should mention, if you have your cell phone handy, you might wanna take some screenshots. However, I realize that there's a lot of links and a lot of information. So in addition to watching this recording again, I will make the PowerPoint slides available. So MTA tr stands for Metropolitan Transit Authority, and there's an information link and there are guides, and it includes these four things, which I thought you might wanna know. How to take the public transport, uh, transit to New York from the area airports, all of them. Advice for riding the subway, advice for riding the bus, and transit safety and security. Now I admit, I tend to take the subway when I'm around there because it's so much faster. But over the past recent years, I've been taking the bus much more because I can see a lot more. So if you're not in a hurry, it is a nice way to see what's going on in New York rather than being underground. Okay, now on the MTA website, there are maps. So I gave you uh, a link for a subway map, and there are also maps for accessible stations. So if you need, you know, elevators, there are specific places to go. All right, now, for those of you who are flying in, um, just bird's eye view, uh, the hotel is about where the H is here, and there are three area airports. Now the closest airport to the, whoops, the closest airport to the hotel is going to be LaGuardia, which is this one here. Um, I realize that the airport you choose is going to depend on what airline you like to fly, where your miles are, um, and the scheduling and the price. Okay, so LaGuardia is here. JFK or Kennedy Airport is here, and Newark Airport is there. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about details about flying into the airports as much as I can. Um, I've been flying into Newark recently, so that's the one I have the most pictures of. Um, I do realize that a lot of you are hauling bags. Uh, probably the easiest way to get there is taxi, but it's gonna be more expensive. But I'm gonna go through all the options because for me personally, okay, if I can save $90 on transportation that I can put towards fabric and yarn, that's what I'm gonna do. But I realize that's not for everybody. So bear with me. If you're flying into Newark Airport, EWR, and you're willing to take public transportation to get back into the city, I recommend that you take the air train. So um, I think you have to go downstairs 
pick up your luggage and then go back upstairs to the air train and here are some of the signs you ought to be looking for. Um, now you purchased a New Jersey transit ticket to New York Penn Station and below here, all right, where's my mouse? Well, you can see the top of somebody's head and all right, here we go. All right, I only have the top of the kiosks that you can buy the ticket at. Now, when you get your physical ticket, you cannot lose it um, because you're gonna need it to exit the air train turnstile on the other side, and you're gonna need it on the New, York, New Jersey transit train to New York City. And what I mean by don't lose it is sometimes people stick it in the little place on the seat and they forget to take it with them. Okay, so if you land, in Newark Airport, you're probably gonna be landing at one of these terminals. Um, now you could probably pick up a taxi from that terminal, go into the city, but if you're going to take public transportation, you get on the um, shuttle trains that run around here and, whoops. You want to end up at this Newark Liberty Airport station, the rail link. Now, some of those internal trains that go here, it seems that every other train stops at the P4 or goes to this Liberty Airport stop. So, uh, you check with the people who have the red jackets on in Newark Airport to verify, do I stay on this train or do I get off at P4 and get on the next um, rail link train? So there's always somebody in a red jacket that will help you get to where you're going. Okay, next airport, LaGuardia Airport, LGA. Um, there, here are some links to the verbal advice that the airport gives you using public transportation, advice on car services, or by taxi. Now, if you're willing to take the least expensive um, public transportation, there's a free bus, here's a picture of it, the Q70, and it goes to Woodside. Uh, I've got another map um, from the Woodside train station and you're gonna to have to change levels, go up and down stairs. Um, take the train to Penn Station or Grand Central Madison stop. And I think those are the approximate prices. And I advise taking a cab from Penn Station or the Grand Central station to the hotel because there isn't a direct subway or bus line. And even if you go to one of those buses or subways, you're still gonna have to walk a block or two. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Um, this is the New York subway map and LaGuardia Airport is here. That Q70 bus is gonna go here and stop at Jackson Heights Roosevelt Avenue subway stop. I don't recommend that you get over there, get off there, you can take the subway for $2.75, but I think it'd be better to go on to the next stop, the Woodside Station, and then transfer to the Long Island Railroad, which goes to Penn Station. Now, the Midtown Hilton is a, about there. Okay, third airport, Kennedy Airport, JMK. Um, this is a picture of the airport terminals. You want to get on the shuttle that goes to Jamaica. So it'll say going to Federal Circle and Jamaica. Here in the fine print is the prices, but I've got that on another slide. Okay. Bird's eye view of what you're doing. Okay, here's the subway map again. Um, 
here is where Kennedy Airport is and the air train is going around the terminals all the way up to Jamaica Station. Now from Jamaica Station, you could take the subway or my preferred way is the Long Island Railroad, which is highlighted in yellow. And the little red asterisk is about where the Midtown Hilton is. Okay, so I'm just gonna mention this. The other places that that air train stops, Federal Circle is where you rent a car. So if for some reason the group is coming, they wanna rent a car and drive to Manhattan, um, or your spouse wants to take a car and, and drive to the Beth Page golf course, you might be getting the car rental there. These are the other stops, Howard Beach, Lefferts Boulevard. I don't think anybody's gonna to wanna to need to do that. Uh, that connects to other subway lines in Queens, but it's just there so you've heard of it and you can decide whether you need to do that or not. Let's see. Okay, now the cost of air train coming from Kennedy Airport, you pay that fare once you arrive at the Jamaica station by buying a Metro card at the kiosks. They will take cash or credit cards. So you have to allot at least $8 for the one-way air train ride. Uh, if you're gonna plan to take subway and buses, you might wanna add more money on the Metro card now. If you know you're taking the air train back, maybe you wanna put on at least $16. So your money is there when you come back. It's $1 if you are buying a Metro card for the very first time, and then $2.75 for every subway or bus fare. So once you have that Metro card, you insert it the correct way and they've got a picture into this little barrier reader and the machine sucks it in, reads it. And as long as you've got the right enough money on there, it opens this green gate. So you and your bags go through there and remember to take your Metro card when it pops up from that machine. Um, okay. So once you get to Jamaica Station, to go to Manhattan, uh, once you pass those barriers, get your Metro card back, there are restrooms and there's a Tim Horton snack bar. Okay, so I've got three options for getting to Manhattan. Number one, if you can haul your bags and you wanna save money, the cheapest way is to use the e-subway train, which is gonna cost 275, but you gotta, go up and down the elevators, get to the ground level and find the subway. It is slow and it is cheap. So you would take the E subway to Fifth Avenue and 53rd Street and walk one long block west to the Hilton Midtown. Second option, um, from Jamaica Station, take the Long Island Railroad. And the reason why I have two options here is since I've been gone, there's a new railroad stop called Grand Central Madison. And this is a level below Grand Central Station. So they just added a Long Island Railroad stop on the east side of Manhattan, which makes it uh, more convenient for commuters. So um, as the crow flies, this is gonna be your closest railroad stop to the hotel. It is 0.9 miles, maybe a 19 minute walk if you weren't hauling your bags. Um, if you get a schedule, you're looking for the paper that says Grand Central City Terminal Zone Branch Timetable. So in the Jamaica Station, there probably should be lots of different um, printed schedules. Option three is to go to Penn Station, which is 34th and 7th. It's a hair more distant to the Hilton Midtown. So either way, um, I recommend taking a cab from either Grand Central Madison or Penn Station to get to the, your hotel. Okay, so if you're in Jamaica Station, look around, look for the screens and monitors for the next train that goes to either Penn Station or um, Grand Central Madison. Um, figure out which track you need to get on. And the screen will also tell you whether it's peak or non-peak. Um, it's more expensive when you're going to the city on rush hour when everybody at work is going, which I think is six in the morning till maybe 10 a.m. Um, 
Some are going to be direct, some are going to be locals, which means they're going to stop at Kew Gardens, Forest Hills, Woodside before they go to Penn Station. Okay, so you purchase your LIRR ticket from the kiosks, but I do have pictures of apps later on. Um, here's sort of what a kiosk can look like, although I think I took this picture in Penn Station. Um, I can't remember what the senior fare is. I'm just barely maybe making senior fare myself, so I don't pay that. Now I will warn you, Penn Station is under heavy duty construction. Plasterboard, white vinyl, everywhere. So if you're not sure how, where the arrows are going to, you know, ask people, ask people if you're confused. Okay, I think, all right. <laughs> this is a good time for me to ask if there are any specific questions about that, but my advice is, if you're nervous about this, just try not to panic, don't rush through it. Another train will get there. Don't run in the wrong direction. Just ask for advice if you're unsure. We do have some questions. Um, the first one is, does the Hilton Midtown have shuttles uh, to the airports? Not that I know of, but I haven't specifically ever asked that question. Okay. Um, and I think you did cover this a minute ago that you weren't sure, but somebody asked what, what the age was for the senior fair. Allison, do you know? 65. Okay, good. And um, in Manhattan, do you recommend taxi cab versus Lyft or Uber? Um, and she goes on to say in August of 2022, uh, she found taxi cabs to be convenient and reasonably priced. I, I guess I think if you're within Manhattan already, if you can hail a cab, uh, it's gonna be ubiquitous, do that. I, I don't think I know whether one is cheaper than the other, but I figure taxi cabs are, they're trained to know everywhere they're going. Now, when I fly home, like at the crack of dawn, my husband um, gets a Uber or a Lyft for me from Manhattan to Kennedy Airport. So if you're going at an off hour, you're not really sure you're gonna find a cab or if it's raining, <laughs> chances are you're gonna be the group that can't find the cab if it's raining. <laughs> You might want to call for an Uber Lyft. Two, two more um, about uh, transportation. Um, Cynthia says the subway at Jamaica used to be pretty sketchy. Is that still the case? Um, and she observes that she wouldn't recommend it at night. Yeah. At night, I do try to avoid uh, subways. You know, that's the time to take a cab. I okay. have taken the E-train from the subway at least once in my life. It depends how much money I want to save. Okay, and um, have you heard of the Newark Airport Express? Plus? <laughs> so yes. There used to be a bus um, oh. that goes from Newark into Manhattan. I would double check if it still runs. Okay. Um, uh, I, somebody says, I understand New York City taxis now use an app like Uber. It's hard to hail them now, I would think, without the app. Well, I'm also thinking that if you're leaving the hotel, I, there usually seems to be like a doorman or somebody who is out hailing cats for people. Should be. Okay, okay. and um, Johnny has... Oh, let me, uh, assuming people might want to accept, for example, go to the garment district. So maybe leaving the hotel, the concierge can, or the doorman can easily hail you a cab. It's possible you might have to call an Uber to get yourself back. Um, or if you think you can catch a cab, you probably have to walk to one of the avenues like 7th Avenue, 8th Avenue to hail a cab. They probably won't go down the cross streets that the stores are going to be on. Allie, do you think that's accurate? Um, somewhat, but you could be lucky and they could come across the street, but avenues you probably have more traffic, more opportunities. North and south. 
Okay, should I go on, Diana? I get, you can nod, okay. Yeah. Okay, um, there are some apps for public transportation. Um, so if you trust your app and your device, you can um, look at schedules, you can buy the tickets online if you don't feel comfortable standing at a kiosk, punching your credit card in or letting it suck in. So MTA train time is for Long Island Railroad trains and Metro North trains. So Long Island Railroad, if you're coming in from uh, LaGuardia, so Woodside to Manhattan or uh, Jamaica to Manhattan. Um, the New Jersey Transit app is for anybody traveling from uh, you know, New Jersey um, and Newark Airport. Now the transit app, I, you, I don't think you can do any ticket purchases, but if you're saying I wanna go from here to there, it'll give you all the options. And I think the like next available time. All right. There are Amtrak apps too, which I've never used. So Amtrak of course will come down from the South and from around the country, but it looks like it's only for Apple devices. Okay. Um, if, if you can't remember everything I'm saying, here are some links for um, other resources for tourists coming to New York. So the first one, newyorksimply.com, getting to New York City from airport. This is somebody's blog who is comparing ways to get to New York City from all these three area airports. So they could be saying, having different opinions from myself. So, you know, read it and research it. But in short, you know, if you're traveling in a group of three or four, there's more people coming from your chapter, you've got luggage. You know, sharing a taxi is probably the easiest way because you may not want to be hauling your bags up and down steps, escalators, walking three blocks, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now the travel time is obviously going to depend on the time of day you come in, you know, rush hour. So there's pros and cons of going public transportation or in a cab. All right, my rough estimates of the pricing. JFK Airport has basically a flat fee traveling from the airport to Manhattan, but then you have to pay for tolls. Um, yeah, range can be anywhere from 75 to 90. And timing is about 60 to 90 minutes to Manhattan. Taxi from LaGuardia, I'm seeing that it's about 35 to 60, dependent on traffic. There is not a flat fee getting from LaGuardia, so it's kind of time-based. Um, mileage plus how long your taxi is waiting in traffic. Now, car travel from Newark. Yeah, probably look into car services or town cars. Now, yellow cabs are from New York City and they can bring people from Manhattan to Newark Airport, but they cannot take passengers in New Jersey and take them to New York because they're New York cabs, not Jersey cars. So if you see a yellow cab at Newark, people getting out, don't assume you can jump in and get a ride back. Now, um, bus okay. services. Carolyn, there, there's one question specifically about uh, ta taxis. Uh, ca are cab fares per person or per car load? I actually don't know because I would only be there by myself and I never take cabs or I've never gone there with another person. Allison, do you have an announcement? Should be, it should be um, one car, you know, for how ma many, but it sometimes they do a charge for luggage uh, depending on the time. But I believe, um, I don't think they charge you for additional people. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Yeah, she and I are usually by ourselves, but um, Marie, who raised your hand, like we can't call on raised hands, you're gonna to have to type your question in the Q&A box. All right, if you travel by bus, um, and I know a lot of people, like I, I used to work with people from Pennsylvania who would come in for uh, conferences and, and they travel by bus. 
So Greyhound and other lines are gonna to tend to come in at the Port Authority bus terminal. That's the address, 8th Avenue and 41st Street. And again, I kind of recommend a cab uh, or you can, you can take an e-subway, but then you have to do a little walking. Um, Flixbus apparently, if it comes from different parts of the country, arrives at Midtown 31st and 8th Avenue. Take a cab to the hotel or you can take, you have to walk to the East Subway, take it four stops and then walk west to 6th Avenue. Now I put this down, Chinatownbus.org. I did some research on it and there's actually say a bus from Raleigh, North Carolina up to New York City and it was less than $100. Now, um, we all know that you know it takes a lot of money to go to conference. So these buses are inexpensive. College students have been taking Chinatown buses all over the place. Now there's downsides. You're gonna be on the bus a long, long time. So you gotta time how and when you go to the bathroom, but I'm just putting it out there. Um, Allison, you had taken one a long time ago. Yeah, from New York to Boston and New York to Washington, DC. And um, they were run about four or five hours. And it was, sometimes they make a pit stop and sometimes not. Um, but if you're coming from a further distance, I'm really not familiar with the, um, the buses. But if you look at that link, you'll be surprised to find how many cities they're covering going to Manhattan. Uh, so I can't really say that I know where they stop in New York, if they do stop in Chinatown, then you have to make your way up to the hotel. Um, and sometimes I have seen them stop at other places in the city. I've never taken them myself, but I do know friends, college student children who have taken Chinatown buses a lot because it's inexpensive. Okay. Yeah. There are some more questions about transportation, but if you're still on transportation, I can hold them until. Okay. Um, yeah. Trains are next. Okay. Just before we move on to yeah. whatever's coming next. Okay. I'll indulge you, ladies. Yes. <laughs> okay. Amtrak trains come into Moynihan train, Moynihan train Hall, which is part of Pennsylvania Station. Metro North lines tend to come from Upper New York State and parts of Connecticut. They arrive at Grand Central Station, which is on the uh, Eastern side. And New Jersey Transit lines also arrive at Penn Station. Now, if you're coming up south on New Jersey, and this is your first time, I'm warning you, do not get off at Newark New Jersey Penn Station. And when they make the announcement, it's gonna sound like New York Penn Station and don't think it's New York Penn Station. If there are still people on that train, you stay on the train. Uh, but if you look out the window, hopefully you can see the words Newark Penn Station um, as opposed to New York Penn Station. Um, okay. I'm ready for transportation questions. Okay, um, on the subway, can we now pay by uh, tap of the credit card or phone and bypass the metro card, or do you, do we still need a metro card? Um, I've, I've got that later. You can okay, that, I've, I've got right. that. Later. Um, where does Amtrak come into Midtown, Grand Central, and or Penn Station? I didn't think Amtrak goes to Grand Central. I might be wrong. I thought Amtrak only went to Pennsylvania Station. Yeah, that, that was the question, if it went to both or just one or the other. So you think just Penn? I, you know, I can't swear to it because it's, you know, it's not a line that I travel on. <clears throat> oh. oh, yeah. You know, but somebody else, somebody else uh, put that in, that it, it does only go to um, Penn Station. And Patrice, thank you. She says she's 100% sure. Um, okay, so do cats take cash or do you need an app or a credit card? Yeah, I'm going to cover that later, but you can use MetroCard. And you can, okay. uh, and I'm going to, I've got pictures of that later. Okay. Uh, are there shuttles from LGA to Manhattan? Hmm. I don't think so. 
Okay. All right. So let's see. Um, a number of people are also sure that Amtrak only goes to Penn Station. Thank you all. Um, oh, so somebody said, so if we come into Penn Station, uh, can you repeat how to get to the hotel? Um, let me figure out which line I have that on. Okay. Oh, well, if it's, is it coming or oh, you're going backwards? Yeah, I think I'm going backwards. However, I think I recommend it taking a cab from Penn Station because if you take public transportation, you're going to have to walk to or from uh, the subway stop at either end because nothing goes door to door Penn Station to um, Midtown Hilton. Okay. Um, let's see. And show uh, my subway map maybe later. Okay. Is there an island one path similar to a clipper path in the Bay Area or is that coming? Not to my knowledge. Okay. All right. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Now I think I'm on to touristy things. Okay. So. Thanks to the industrious efforts of some uh, chapter members, uh, I've got two attachments which should be available uh, with this recording and with the PowerPoint slides. Okay, so file national.shopping.pdf is a list of the garment district shops, um, address, hours that she could find. So that was compiled by Laura Adler, who's the president of the North Jersey chapter. And then document nycinfo.doc is organized like by neighborhood and borough. So Cynthia Blair, who's in greater Seattle chapter has listed shops, museums, eateries and public restrooms. <laughs> so that was a great bonus. And then there's other city guys. Now I scoped the uh, Hilton Midtown and copies of the publication cityguidenewyork.com were on stands around the city and in the lobby of the Hilton. Now, if you belong to AAA or any other um, motorist travel service, see if you can get a tour book uh, and maps of New York City. Um, as a When I resided in New York State, they had like a special New York City, Manhattan, set of maps. Um, I couldn't tell whether that was still avail available, but that might be something worth asking if you know you're gonna visit New York City. Okay, Allison gave me some other links that I didn't know about. Uh, NYCgo.com is an official guide. So in addition to the suggestions for things that are happening at the time, you know, theater, different neighborhoods, events, attractions, sporting events, where to shop, under the stay and plan menu, they've got maps, a lot of tips on finding accessible um, places, transportation, parking, basically everything I'm trying to give you in this PowerPoint and more. And Allison also found something called bigapplegreeter.org. Now this is good if you're interested in the less touristy places in New York City, if you're willing to for example, go explore Brooklyn or the Bronx or um, I don't know, the cloisters. <laughs> Check the visitors facts menu. I guess you have to email a request for a greeter and what it is you'd like to do. So if they have a volunteer who is knowledgeable and available uh, for the time you're gonna be there and uh, can talk about the place that you wanna go to, they will match you. Now it did say you're not guaranteed to find a greeter because these are all volunteers and April to October is a busy time. So, you know, you're taking your chances if you can get this. Now, these people are not professional tour guides. They don't know every single thing about the city. They just know in detail what they volunteer to show you. They just love the city and they love helping tourists appreciate uh, the little known facts about their neighborhood. So it's free, you're not allowed to tip them and they take a maximum of six people in a group. Okay, um, 
Some of you might be interested in seeing shows. Now, if you want to get the discounted stuff, there's the TKTS booth. Um, now, the time that I went there, it looked like it was shut, but that was because it was early in the morning. And then they open up later in the afternoon so they can uh, sell whatever tickets have not been sold for that evening or possibly the day after. So there are two locations. One is in Times Square. All right, let me find my cursor again. Uh, this is looking from the north to the south. Where you go to buy the tickets is actually around the back here. And then there's a second location around Lincoln Center. And this one was open a little earlier. Um, now, the problem is if you are in attending conference, like you really don't have time to be standing online. So it might only work if you've got a friend or a spouse who is going to be standing online and possibly texting you, hey, is this the show you want to see? Okay. Allison, have you got any comments about using TKTS? Um, I haven't used them in quite a while, but uh, a lot of people use them and they get to see shows uh, almost 50% off. Um, and you never know what's going to go up on the board. So it's potluck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I added something in here. Uh, for those of you who are not city gals, if you've had it up to here and you need to see greenery, <laughs> Allison told me about a new thing that I don't know about, Little Island, New York City. Uh, I do know about the High Line and I have friends from Utah that have gone in and just said, it was nice to be in a walking park, an oasis. So, you know, if the city is getting too much for you, you can make your way down to like the lower west side of Manhattan and do these things. Allison, do you want to talk about Little Island since it's new to me? Um, yeah, it's been in existence for a couple of years. It was um, paid for by Barry Diller, who also put a lot of money into the High Line. And it's a small park, but it's very unusual because as you see from the picture, there it's sort of like little pods together, but you wouldn't know that it's created that way because it looks like hills and whatever. And there's a lot of greenery. There's a small little theater there that's open air. And uh, if you're lucky, you can get to uh, buy a ticket for a performance. It doesn't take long to go see it, but it's very, very uh, pleasant to walk through. And it's right off the High Line. So if you're going down to that area, you're, the Whitney Museum is near there, the Little Island and the High Line and the Chelsea um, Market is there. So you've got a lot of things to choose and a lot of things to occupy your time. So that's it. Okay. Uh, I also put down uh, something about St. Patrick's Cathedral. It's not too far from the um, Hilton. So if you wanna go to church services or even go in and look, that's where it is. Okay, um, museums, all right. One thing I wanted you guys to know that uh, according to my research, most of the museums are closed on Wednesdays. So for those of you who are planning your trips or thinking you're going to get to it before the leadership day, hmm, you got to know about this. All right. Okay. So traveling around the subways and the buses, here's a picture of a Metro card. Now the Metro cards are supposed to be usable through the end of 2023, but they've already extended that deadline because we can never finish things on time. But they should be in use during our conference. But your other option is to use this OMNY device, which are at the entrances to the subways and buses. So you can use your credit card, debit card, or if you have those digital wallets on your smartphone and smartwatch, I haven't mastered doing that yet, but I have tried it on my credit card. And don't worry, I mean, it only, uses my credit card and subtracts money when I tap the credit card on this. So all the times that I had my credit cards in my purse and my wallet, nobody sucked money out of it as I was 
going through the turnstile using my Metro card instead. Okay, um, let's see, Diana, any questions? Yes, <laughs> yes, many. Um, uh, how far is the, is there some questions about the garment district? Um, how far is the Midtown Hilton from uh, the garment district? Is it within walking distance? And are there, or, or where are the ASU member guides to the garment district, et cetera, uh, located? I'm not quite sure um, about that. Uh, and then there's a couple theater questions too, but let's do the garment district and then. Okay. Um, let's see. Or is that coming? Uh, no, I'm just deciding what map I can show. All right. I don't have all these things on one map. I'm gonna try to use what I have. I mean, in my viewpoint, it's walkable, but it's a it's a healthy walk. Um, it's over a mile. Okay. Um, All right, this isn't the optimal, but this is like the best I can do. The hotel. All right, the hotel is about here. And unfortunately, I have to go down to the different page Oh. So you can't get a sense, but you know, around Times Square. So we're talking the garment district, like about here. So okay. Says, well, but okay. The hotel is probably about here. Garment district kind of around here. So, I mean, by the time you walk to a subway, get down about one stop and over here. Yeah, there's still some walking involved. Oh, by the way, um, 42nd Street in Bryant Park, right across the street is a Japanese bookstore, which I like to go into called Kino Kunya. So if you like little uh, Japanese tchotchka, and they also have a lot of um, books, crafting books. Now, not many of us can read Japanese, but if you're good at looking at pictures, I, I actually own a lot of pattern books from this store. Okay, now I'm also about the size of the average Japanese person. So this may not work for everybody. But... Okay. Ready for more? Question. It's it's not a short walk, but it's going to be a hefty walk. <laughs> okay. Um, some questions about theaters. Uh, someone says their recollection about TKTS is that they don't accept credit cards. Uh, do either one of you know? You know, look, I, I gave that. I would assume that answer would be on the link that I provided. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and what's the typical theater price uh, these days? It's expensive these days. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Like uh, everything, right? Uh, I would say, well, you know, the the top shows are very expensive. Um, tickets would probably, I'd say minimally, would be about $50. If you're going off Broadway, it would be less. But I'd say 50 to 75 might be a ballpark figure to get a ticket for a Broadway show at the tickets booth. Okay. And if um, you want to be assured of getting in the show, which means you go directly to the theater, not TKTS, it's, it's hundreds, right? Yes, you can go to the ticket booth at the um, theater itself, but you're, you know, you're not getting a discount. Right. Okay. Um, Margo, you flagged a question that you wanted to answer. 
Are you there, Margo? We can come back. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. What did you say? Um, you there's a question in uh in the Q and A that you flagged that you wanted to answer the question live. Oh, it must have been an accident. I okay. Don't... All right. Carry on. Carry on. Um, <laughs> somebody's asking, uh, where do we get the things to download about stores, et cetera? And I think that's um. It to go up after this is over. It's not up now. Okay. Okay. Oh, so um, probably members only area, the place where you go to, uh, you know, see a recording of this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how far is the Twin Towers Memorial from the hotel? That's a hefty. It, it's uh, at least a couple of miles. Okay. Because okay. Turns out that'll be down lower, lower Manhattan. Um, okay. Um, let's see that answer live. Uh, let's see, let's oh, see. And, um, but Allison, if they get to Times Square and they take the red line subway, probably the number one, the red line subway number one it will get you to that area. Which area? You mean the uh, World Trade, uh, the memorial? Yes. Um, there is a stop at the on the E train, the World Trade Center. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. If you go to Fulton Street, there's a lot of uh, subway lines that intersect there. So um, they could take a look when they get their subway map to see which lines can go down. But uh, your hotel is what on 50th and 7th? Is that correct? Uh, 53rd and 6th Avenue. Oh, 53rd and 6th. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to have to do transfers if you take the subway. Right. Or you walk oh. over one in uh, um, an avenue and take oh. a train yeah. straight down. You could do that. Yeah, the green line. Okay. Yeah. Let me let me just break in here. I'm going to pass this uh, comment on in the answered questions. But um, somebody said, please inform individuals that the World Trade Center Memorial has to have a ticket purchased prior to going. So, yeah. Okay. So I assume uh, if you look it up on the web and, and purchase your ticket in advance, you know, take note of when they say maps directions how to get there. Okay, um, there were a few others. There are some questions coming in for things that were already, for sections that were already covered. I'm gonna save those, we can hit them all at the end. Okay. Um, and I would imagine eating options around the hotel, is that coming later? No, I have not done that. Um, okay. Can, can we, like you walk around and see them. So I, I've not put a, okay. a list of that. Okay. All right. Um, and which, which is faster to get to the garment district, taxi or walking and how much for a taxi? I, I can't say how much it's going to be for a taxi. Um, it's Alice, Alice and you, it's Think it's going to be a mile trip so um i'm not sure yeah, it depends how long yeah you know you could also trip. try your uber or um lyft or a bus a bus can you know also so um the subway and the bus would be the cheapest um does the bus maybe go across 53rd avenue well, you're going from your the hotel down to the garment district. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Well, so the garment district is more. is around what street? Um, anywhere from forty fourth to thirty eighth. Oh, I kept thinking it was further south. Okay, they might want to take a bus or a subway. Yeah. Well, the thing is, okay, you've got to go south from the hotel. So 6th Avenue runs north, so you can't get a bus on 6th Avenue. So you've got to get yourself over to 7th Avenue, which is a long block walk. You can take a 7th Avenue bus down from 53rd Street. Um, if you take a 5th Avenue bus down, 
you got to walk the long block west and then yes. you gotta... right well i guess you could take a 42nd street bus back to the western side yes yeah across town mm -hmm. yeah it's kind of hard because I I kind of need to know exactly what what the address is of where they're going. I thought yeah. the Garmin district was actually further south in the 40s. I thought it was like 20s and 30s, but I could be wrong. You know that better than I. Yeah, I don't think it's as far as the 20s or there's very few things in the 20s. Oh, yeah. Things have closed, I guess. OK. Well, OK. When the attachment that uh, Laura made up gets put up, then look at that, look at the stores you think you want to go to, and then probably try and map it out. Right. That's my advice. You know, the hotel people can help them also, you know, the best way to get to a place. They should know at the desk. Mm -hmm. Okay, Diana, should I handle any other questions? Or I think I've got three more slides. Okay, so I took a picture of the Hilton. Um, so the address is 1335 Sixth Avenue. Sixth Avenue is also known as Avenue of the Americas. Okay, we have a lock over here, but. All right, I'm not sure why. I noticed this happens somehow when I stop. My down screen doesn't work, but um, okay. Parking, parking at the hotel. Uh, this is a picture of parking at the New York Hilton. There are entrances on 53rd Street and 54th. You're paying the lot, not the hotel. Now there are other parking lots in the area and they all seem to be run by this business SP uh, Plus. So at the time I took this picture, September, 2022, those were the prices, so um, daily rate, if you're parking, leaving your car there, it's hefty. So, well, driving, most of the locals will advise that you take public transportation, but if you're coming from somewhere relatively close by, like even Ohio, you've got a bunch of people from your chapter, one of my suggestions is consider driving to a nearby airport's long-term parking parking there and then taking the public transportation that I outlined into New York City. So, you know, maybe you'd consider parking at the Philadelphia International Airport, Newark, or if you're coming down from Connecticut, the Northeastern states, park at LaGuardia. Just an idea to save you a little bit of money. All right, and I believe that is all I have. So back to questions, or do I need to go back to some slides? Um, probably just questions, but as we work through it, I'm just going to start at the top rather than try and work backwards. So um, there's some more questions. Well, the one thing I think you were going to try and repeat or at least give someone an idea of where in the slideshow to look is uh, if we come into Penn Station, can you repeat how to get to the hotel? Um, uh, have you taken any of the shuttle vans from the airport to Manhattan? I personally have not because I'm comfortable taking public transportation, so I have not. But okay. um, yes, if you do your research, uh, you know, go to the airport websites. They probably do have 
different ways to get there. And even those blogs that I gave you links to. There used to be like a blue van or shuttle vans that um, run from the airports, but I need to double check because things have changed so much now. Mm -hmm. um, not sure exactly if they still exist, but they might. Um, the problem with those is, you know, they fill up the whole car with people and you're being deposited in different areas of the city. So your journey could be quite lengthy time-wise, but it, it would probably be cheaper than a cab, but that's up to you. You know, if time is um, important to you and you need to get where you want to go, then probably a cab or um, the train as Carolyn suggested. But I have taken the shuttles um, years ago and um, it took me three hours to get home and I said it wasn't worth it. So I don't do that anymore. Okay. Yeah. And filling up the bus and then taking driving people, dropping them off along the way. Yeah. Got it. Um, and I, I, I'm sorry, I was responding to something else. So I, I'm not sure if this is the question you just answered. Uh, so forgive me, but um, somebody wanted to know uh, which is faster to get to the garment district taxi or walking and how much for a taxi. But I guess I, I don't have the exact answer because I haven't walked myself that route because that's not where I live. I, I don't walk it. I would walk it, but I haven't walked it in time to and I haven't taken a cab either, so. <laughs> okay, all right. How um, much? I, Allison, have you, are there uh, websites that estimate cabs? I think I've seen that, but I don't use it very much. I've not seen it, um, but I suppose if you had a um, Uber account or something and you looked it up, you could get an idea approximately how much it would cost from point A to point B. Um, Even but, that little transit app that I um, showed you people, the green one. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, when, I, when I've when i been in a city and I open it up, it'll give me, all right, this is the nearest bus that takes you a lift. My, I can't tell whether the time is how soon they'll get to me or how, the time distance lift estimates it's going to take. It doesn't tell you the cost though. So, okay. you know. Carolyn, there was an earlier slide about um, the transit app. Is yeah. that right? Okay, okay. Somebody had asked, and if it's in the slide, um, Mary O, you look, uh, go through the slides when we post them up. Um, I gave you the picture. So when you're doing your app search on the app store or Google Play, you know what it looks like. Yep, yep. How much do you usually tip the cabbie? 10 to 15%. Okay, yes. right. very good. Um, and then some just like logistic New York type questions. What is a long block? Okay. Okay. Um, New York City, uptown, downtown. The, it's really easy because uptown, all the street numbers are increasing in number. Downtown, they're going low. So uptown, downtown are short blocks. Between avenues, so going horizontally across New York City, that's what we call long blocks. It's a long block to get between 6th Avenue and 7th Avenue. Long block to get 7th Avenue to 8th Avenue. Um, okay, what's shorter going horizontal? Maybe like uh, Allison, what? Park Lexington and? Between uh, avenues is, is long. It's, it's like a couple of blocks put together, so. Yeah. Okay, so hmm. these red lines, these are long blocks. The black lines, you can see they're closer together. Those are short blocks. So those are the numbers. Okay. Um, the New Yorker tells you, oh, it's only one block. You got to ask them, is it a short block or a long block? 
Yes. And then um, yeah. along the same lines, will somebody explain how the New York streets are numbered east, west, north, south? Uh, it will help if for people who haven't visited before. I think, um, gee, I can't remember if either Laura or um, Cynthia put that in her attachment. Manhattan is a grid, has a grid pattern. So, um, you know, it's numbered streets, north and south, and it should be easy to find things. Fifth Avenue is your dividing line. East of Fifth Avenue, you would have east addresses. Uh, west of Fifth Avenue, the, the addresses would be west. So that should help you with an address anyway. The fifth okay. avenue is a dividing line. All right, there's a few more. I know we're a little over time, Carolyn, but there are one or two that I think probably we wanna, um, do you have any public safety tips? Oh, good, we did wanna talk about that. Um, and we're also gonna mention about our opinion on that. We, we can't hear you very well. Okay. Uh, public safety, yes, thank you. I did want to talk about that. My advice is um, if you're going, study Laura's list and Cynthia's list and have an idea where you're going. Look at a map, you know, Google, try to get a good idea of where you're going to go on paper. Um, I don't, have, uh, yes, I know some people are going to want to have their cell phones out and have the map as you're walking and that's fine but still i mean don't cross streets with your nose and your phone um stay aware of your surroundings if you go on a subway i don't stand close to the edge of the track to try to see when the next train is coming given things that have happened yes i stand back i you know <laughs> stay away from people if I, I if i don't feel like i'm safe um just be alert. What was that? What was that, Allison? You have to be alert at all times. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. And um, uh, um, and I would say maybe if you can't, don't bring this humongous purse. Even backpacks. You know, do a crossbody. Have your under your arm. I mean, make sure you know. Don't don't leave the opening out or where people can grab at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So streamline what you're out shopping with. Oh, and if you are going to the garment district, this is not safety too, but bring swatches or things that uh, you want to match because you never know what you're going to find. Okay. Um, are there still information booths at the airports and subways and at the bus stations? Information, I, let's see. Booths? I'm not sure how to answer. Um, information booths. I think what she's asking is if you're at airport at the subway, at the bus station, are there, is there somewhere where there's pamphlets or information that you could ask someone for information? Yes. I'm seeing at all three airports, they have, you know, uh, a stamp information booths or people there to help out of towners. Got it. Got it. Bus um, stations, I have it. Well, I guess if there's a bus depot, you can ask, but like the bus stops on the street, it, no, I don't see information. Got it, okay. And um, Kathleen said, thank you for doing this, which I second. Uh, just one comment. Um, I know that this is optional, but just carry a mask with you wherever you go, because you might want to be wear it, especially if you go to the theater or a lot of people, you know, are in attendance, but it's optional. But just carry one with you at all times. Well, there was another thing I wanted to mention. I know many people are going to want to go to Mood, but one of the reasons I gave this presentation is, and I have permission to tell this, um, Sue Langley, our other board member, went to Mood. She was with her grandchild, big stroller. Uh, Mood used to have 
um, an accordion, sliding door. There used to be a dedicated elevator man. So those of you old timers and New York City people, you remember that. But now they've upgraded the elevator. They don't have the um, elevator man anymore. Uh, it's a new panel. So I think uh, a screen shows up with the floor you need to press. Okay, so our darling Sue Langley accidentally set off the alarm in the mood elevator two times. So uh, that you don't want to do. And I gave this because even as a experienced New Yorker, I missed two buses, one railroad, because things changed and they were different from when I grew up. So um, I think what might affect you is I tried to take a crosstown bus and I'm used to just swiping my Metro card on the transfer. Um, but on the major crosstown bus lines, there was an external kiosk and I didn't know that I was supposed to like put my Metro card in and get a little paper transfer and then give that to the bus driver. No, you don't have to give it to the bus driver, but you have to have it if there's a monitor on the bus who checks, okay. otherwise you get fined. It's usually a uh, certain bus lines and it's called a select bus. Um, and they usually do express stops. I know the one that goes up First Avenue, the bus line, um, and comes down Second Avenue, you need um, that special ticket if you go on the select bus. There is the regular bus that makes the stops every other block, and that you just put in your Metro card into the um, container on the bus. But if you want the one that's more express, there's a little, um, it's not a key, it's like a little, um, stand outside and you put your card in it and you get a paper ticket and uh, you just enter the bus. You don't have to put your Metro card into a slot, but um, the 14th street crosstown bus is also a select bus and you need a paper ticket. Unfortunately, there's no known list that I know that tells you exactly what bus lines um, have it. I know the first and second avenue bus that goes north and south, you need it. The 14th Street, most of the crosstown buses, 23rd Street, 14th Street, uh, 57th Street, 72nd Street, the crosstown buses, you need that little paper ticket and you find this little metal box out um, on the street by the bus stop and you have to put your metro ticket in and you get the paper receipt and you have to carry that. Um, back in the day, I haven't seen too many monitors come on the bus lately, but it, back in the day, the monitor came on and you didn't have that little paper slip, it was a hundred dollar fine. So this is something you need to know. Uh, and of course I did this on a Wednesday going to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, which is how I know that they close on Wednesday. So. <laughs> You do need to double check with the museums. Not all the museums are closed on Wednesday. Some are closed on Tuesdays, some are closed on Monday. So if there's a particular museum you want to see, double check their hours. Okay, Diana, is that it for questions? Yeah, I you know either there there's some other ones that have either been covered or um if if you ask a question that you feel wasn't answered do check in the answered questions section because I I see a few repeats of things that I that I typed answers to in the answered questions. Okay. All right, so um, I've asked. Normally, uh, you can see the. National Neighborhood Group presentation for one or two weeks after the event. But given that this is for people going to conference, I have asked that we will put it back up closer to conference so people who can go can review. All right. Um, Okay, by the way, there's specific questions about conference and basically we haven't nailed down those answers yet or the yeah. details yet. So yes, we don't have an answer for you and that's why we don't have an answer for you. 
Okay, I, I started to talk about getting from Penn Station to um, the hotel. Okay, so Penn Station is here. The hotel is about here. So there's no real direct public transportation way to go. And even if you wanted to do stuff, like you'd have to walk and transfer all over the place. So um, that's why I'm thinking it's probably just smarter to get a cab because, all right, the, maybe the easiest way to take public transportation, you'd have to walk from Penn Station over to this line, take that straight up two stops, but then you'd have to walk over there to the hotel, dragging your luggage. So. That's why I'm kind of thinking, you know, I know how you guys travel to conference the way I do. Maybe take a cab. Okay. I think those were all the questions that I felt that I could answer. Right. Okay. So I hope that uh, makes people feel more comfortable. If you have never, ever gone to the city before, um, you know, share this with the people in your chapters that we've tried to give you some tips, but okay. Um, Allison, thank you so much. And Diana, thanks a lot. Uh, but so I think we're ready to sign off. So thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm.